Well, the kids are terrific. I mean, they're, uh, they're kids, you know, they, they love Derek Jeter and they love their sports and uh, they, they can't believe I've actually met some of these athletes and they're inquisitive and they have good questions and uh, fun. I hope they got something out of it because uh -huh. I certainly did. Here's my question to you. Do you think you have to be very big or tall to be an athlete? Raise your hand. Well, you know what? In the greatest moments in sports, one of the athletes who's in the book is seven feet tall. Do you have any idea how big that is? If I were to interview that person, I'd be going like this. That's how tall he'd be. His name is Will Chamberlain. And he was seven feet tall, a big, huge guy. And the reason he's in the book is because exactly 50 years ago this coming March, in a basketball game in the unlikely place of Hershey, Pennsylvania, he scored 100 points in one game by himself. He scored 100 points. Nobody has ever done that. Nobody has come close. You may have heard of Kobe Bryant, who plays for the Los Angeles Lakers. A couple of years ago, he scored 81 points in the game. That's the best he ever did, 81. But Will scored 100 points. And so what the interesting thing about that is, if you like basketball, you know that if you take a very long shot, it counts for three points. Well, when Will Chamberlain played, there was no such thing. The longest shot was only worth two points, even if you threw it the whole length of the court. So he made his 100 points by all two-point shots and foul shots. So okay, he's seven feet tall. So you'd say, okay, you gotta be big. Well, one of the athletes in the greatest moments in sports was four feet nine. A couple of you might be even taller than four feet nine now. So who could be such an amazing athlete at four feet nine? Oh, you have an idea? Who? Golf? No, not a golfer. Not a baseball player, four feet nine. One more guess. Hockey, no. No, the person who was four feet nine was the most amazing moment in sports was a little girl who was 16 years old, I think, or was she 14? Now I gotta look it up, 14? I have to read my book. She was 14 years old, I think. Let's check, look it up, Teresa. Anyway, her name was Nadia Komenic, she was a gymnast from Romania. And in the 1976 Olympics, all four feet, whatever her she was, and 80 pounds or 79 pounds, she got a perfect 10 in gymnastics. Nobody had ever gotten a perfect score before, before she did. And she not only did it once, she did it five or six more times in the same Olympics. Doesn't say, huh? She was either four, four, 14 years old. She was 14, this tall. And she was an Olympic champion, gold medal winner, perfect score. So it just shows you that athletes, famous athletes and champion athletes, come in all shapes and sizes. One athlete who's in the book never talked, never said a word, and had 600 children. Think about that. A champion athlete, never gave one interview to the reporters, never said a word, and had over 600 children. What? Very good, you got it all by yourself. Secretariat, a racehorse. Of course a racehorse doesn't talk. Secretariat won the Triple Crown. You know what the Triple Crown is? Three great races, a horse. Kentucky Derby, Preakness Stakes, Belmont Stakes. The Belmont Stakes is right down the street here in Belmont, New York. 
1973. Great movie if you haven't seen it called Secretariat. What, did you see it? Great movie. One of the greatest moments in sports was a horse, of course. Five greatest baseball players of all time. That's where we got the arguments. Because there are 300 now, or really 297 baseball players in the Baseball Hall of Fame. That's where all the greatest baseball players are in the Baseball Hall of Fame. 297. Well, we chose 25. So who gets in and who doesn't get in? So I had people vote. I had some experts vote. I, I, I took myself out of it because I didn't want to get anybody mad at me. But it's interesting to note that of the 25 players who we chose as the greatest of all time, two of them are not in the Hall of Fame. Two are not in the Baseball Hall of Fame. How do you figure that? Well, one of them is still playing. So if you're still playing baseball, you can't be elected in the Hall of Fame. You'd have to be retired five years. So one player in the book is still playing. Anybody want to guess who that is? And it's not Derek Jeter, hands down. You have a Yankee shirt on. Who do you think? Who's your favorite Yankee? Derek Jeter? Who's your second favorite Yankee? Any guesses? Anybody like A-Rod? Alex Rodriguez? Alex Rodriguez was picked to be one of the 25 greatest baseball players of all time. Um, but uh, he, So he's not in the Hall of Fame because he's still playing. There's another player who's not in the Hall of Fame who's considered to be the 25 greatest. His name is Pete Rose. Anybody ever hear of Pete Rose? You've heard of him. Pete Rose holds the record. Nobody's ever gotten more hits than Pete Rose. The most. The most. How many do you have? I don't, I'd have to look it up. Uh, how many do you have? Uh, 3,000 and what? I don't know. Pete Rose. Teresa's going to look it up for us. Nobody got more hits than he did, but he's not in the Hall of Fame because he did something you're not allowed to do in baseball. He bet on a game. If you're a baseball player, you can't bet. You can't bet that your team's going to win or lose. And he did when he was the manager of a baseball team, and he was declared ineligible, and he was banned from baseball, which he is still banned to this day, and therefore he's not in the Hall of Fame. Now, there's one other player in the book who never played Major League Baseball. Now, how could you be one of the 25 greatest baseball players ever to play, but never played Major League Baseball? Jackie Robinson played Major League Baseball. It was a good guess, though. Do you know that Jackie Robinson's in both books? He's one of the 25 greatest baseball players of all time, and one of the greatest moments of sports because he was the first black baseball player back in 1947 or 8. God, I've got to read my book. Get this right here. Man. 47, thank you. Um, okay, so how do you figure that as a player who's one of the 25 greatest, but is, is not... Never played Major League Baseball. Do you have an answer? Well, before Jackie Robinson played, there were no black baseball players in Major League Baseball. He broke the color barrier. They used to have what was called the Negro Leagues. They were baseball leagues that were made up of black baseball players. Well, one of the players in the league was by the name of Josh Gibson. He was a great uh, catcher in first baseman, and primarily a catcher. And he's in the book as one of the greatest baseball players. Nobody knows how many home runs he hit. He could have hit 700, could have hit 800, could have hit 900. Nobody knows because they didn't keep accurate records. Anybody know how many home runs have been hit clear out of Yankee Stadium? They've gone over the stands and out into the street. How many baseball in the history of Yankee Stadium, the old Yankee Stadium, the new Yankee Stadium, how many baseballs have been hit clear out of the stadium in fair territory? Any idea? 15? Anyone? Anyone? Why don't you tell them? You don't know? You didn't say anything? You didn't say secretariat? What? One? One. The answer is none. Not one, no home run has ever been hit clear out of the stadium. However, 
Some people claim that Josh Gibson once hit a home run clear out of Yankee Stadium. But nobody knows for sure. Because there was no film. There was no accurate reporting. Do you know the 25 greatest moments in sports, we don't even know if one of them really happened or not? How about that? We have a great, how many hits did P. Rose have? No idea, huh? All right. He'd be on baseball players. You're looking in the wrong book. Um, he beat Ty Cobb, I know that much. Um, one of the moments, the greatest moments in sports, we don't know if it happened or not. Did you ever hear of Babe Ruth? Babe Ruth is probably the greatest baseball player ever. He was a big, heavy guy who hit home runs galore. Big home runs. He was also a great pitcher in his uh, early life. Well, in 1932, in the World Series, the Yankees were playing in Chicago in Wrigley Field. And Babe Ruth came up to the plate during a game, and some people claimed he went like this, pointing to where he was going to hit the ball. Nobody knows if he really did or not. But you know what he did after he pointed? Hit a home run. So people think that Babe Ruth predicted that I'm going to hit a home run, and he pointed. But nobody knows for sure. There's no film. Nobody took a photograph. Some players and fans who were at the game said, yes, he really did. Others said, well, we're not sure. He might have been pointing at the pitcher because he was mad at him, or he might have been pointing at the other dugout because they were giving him a hard time. Back in those days, when the other team didn't, when the fans didn't like the players, they would throw lemons on the field. I don't know why. Can you believe that? They would throw lemons on the field. So maybe he was pointing that someone was throwing a lemon. I don't know. No one knows what he was doing. There's another story that'll be in the book next fall about this young man named Billy Mills. Billy grew up very poor on an Indian reservation. And he decided he liked to run. At first he wanted to be a boxer, but he wasn't very good, so he became a runner. And in the 1964 Olympics, he won the gold medal in the 10,000 meter race. He was the first American to ever win the gold medal in the 10,000 meters. And no American has ever won it the 10,000 meters since. And this was a poor guy who grew up on a reservation, uh, Indian reservation. And after the race, they asked the, the world record holder who he beat, guy from uh, New Zealand, they asked him, were you worried about Billy Mills? And the guy said, no, I never even heard of him. Billy who? So here's a story of somebody who no one gave any chance, no one had ever heard of, grew up on an Indian reservation, he wound up winning the gold medal. And I just tell you the story because, oh, one of the stories in that book is someone who grew up uh, down the road here in Great Neck. Anybody ever hear of Sarah Hughes? She was ice skater. Anybody like to ice skate? She was a figure skater. And in the, in the 2002 Olympics in Salt Lake, she won the gold medal from Great Neck, right down the street. She won the gold medal. Nobody expected her to do it. Uh, the favorite uh, was not her. In fact, after the, the first day of skating, she was in fourth place. Nobody in the history of the Olympics had ever gone from fourth place to first place. Sarah Hughes was the first. And she wasn't very tall either, but her father was from Canada and made a little ice skating rink for her in the backyard. The father used to play um, hockey, played hockey at Cornell University. They made a little ice rink. Can you imagine if you had a little ice rink in your backyard and she just went out and skated all the time? Then wound up being an Olympic champion. Yeah. Yes, some of the students can ask questions. Who has questions? Yeah. Speak into the mic. How long were you a sports announcer for? Yes. How long, how long was I a sports announcer? Uh, would you believe I'm still a sports announcer, so I'm still doing it. Uh, I started in... Uh, 1964, my college radio station at Syracuse. He's wearing an orange shirt there, Syracuse. Uh, I started in 1964. So what, what is this? 19, 47 years, 48 years. Whoa, is that crazy? 48 years? Man, that's a lot of sports casting, right? Who else has a question? You have a question. Oh, you have another question? Hold on. Okay, that's a great question. Yeah. 
Yeah. What made you get into sports broadcasting? Well, that's kind of an accident. I was at the college station at, where did I go to college? Syracuse, very good, someone's listening. And I went to the college radio station, and I knocked on the door, and I said, you know, I would like to play music, because, you know, I, you know, they used to call them disc jockeys. Anyway, I wanted to be, I wanted to play ra uh, music on the radio, and they said to me that uh, everyone wants to do that, but they needed somebody on a Saturday night to uh, read the, the sports scores. You know, three to two, four to one, partial score three, old joke. So anyway, um, so that's how I started. I started the college radio station. So that's how I started. And I just went from there. My first TV job was in a place called Dayton, Ohio. You ever hear of Dayton, Ohio? My next job was in a place called Boston. Yeah, you heard of Boston, Fenway Park. And I used to be an announcer for a basketball team called the Boston Celtics. And I, so I used to work in Boston. And then I came to New York. So that's what I did. Syracuse, Dayton, Boston, New York. Touchdown. Next question. Ah. What was the best game ever? What was the best game I ever covered? Wow, that's hard to say. You know, that game, that, that uh, game the Giants won was a pretty amazing game. Um, I cover a lot of World Series games. I think when the Yankees won the World Series in 1996, before you were born, uh, it was very exciting. So I've had the uh, good fortune to cover a lot of championships, Super Bowls and World Series and Olympics. I heard someone mention Larry Bird. I, I, I once announced the basketball game, Larry Bird, I once announced the basketball game when he played in college. He played in college at a school called Indiana State. <clears throat> he was a great college basketball player. I was actually the announcer for, I actually ever hear Magic Johnson I announced the game of uh, two games of his when he was in college. So uh, I've been around a while. You have a question right here. Um, have you ever met anyone who players who? What New York Yankee players have I met? Well, let's see. There's uh, five of them in the book, the 25 greatest baseball players of all time. Babe Ruth, I never met him. Lou Gehrig, never met him. Mickey Mantle, I met him. He was my idol. Alex Rodriguez, I met him. Joe DiMaggio, met him. And of the current Yankees, I've met almost all of them. Um, Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, uh, Bernie Williams doesn't play anymore. So I've met him. In fact, I'm, I'm going to see uh, anybody know who Mark Teixeira is, the Yankees' first baseman? I'll be seeing him in a couple of weeks at a sports dinner. And Yogi Berra will be there, too, if you ever heard of Yogi Berra. Anyway, who else has a question? Uh, uh, you got a question. Brandon. Um, what was the most memorable game you ever went to? Most memorable game I ever went to? It's hard to pick one. It really is. Um, one that really stands out for me. Does anybody like hockey? Well, 1994, on June 14th, the New York Rangers won the Stanley Cup. That's where you become champion of hockey. The game was at Madison Square Garden in New York. The New York Rangers had not won the Stanley Cup uh, since 1940, 4-0. So that was 54 years they had gone without a Stanley Cup, and they haven't won one since. But that night was very memorable, and one reason it was memorable for me was because the year before, Montreal had won a Stanley Cup, and Montreal wins a lot of Stanley Cups, and the fans were so excited, they caused a lot of damage in the streets of Montreal. They turned over cars, they broke car windows on their famous shopping street, St. Catherine Street. And everyone was worried that what would happen if New York won a Stanley Cup? What would the fans in New York do? You know what they did? Nothing. They applauded and cheered, and there were, no one was arrested, and no one did anything bad. And uh, it was a very memorable night, very exciting. June 14th, 1994, the Rangers won the Stanley Cup. Who has another question written down? Somebody over here. Joseph. Here. He's going to be a teacher, everyone. How did you get the ideas to write a children's book and become an author? How did I get the idea? You want the true story or the made-up story? You want a true story? Okay, I'll give you the made-up story first. I thought it would be a great idea to write a book. I just always wanted to write a book, and I just thought it would be a great idea 
to write a book that kids would enjoy reading. True story is, they called me on the phone one day and they said, hey, do you want to write a book? I said, yeah, sounds okay. So they said, we'll pay you. I said, oh, that sounds even better. That's the true story. But I, you know, it, it, the truth in fact though is I was, uh, I used to be a camp counselor when I, at various camps, day camps and sleepaway camps. And I always loved, you know, being a counselor and, and working and playing with kids and, and having a good time. Um, so I, I really, once I started writing, and I said, wow, well, it really was a lot of fun. And the hard part for me, I thought, was trying to write it so kids would understand it. Because you don't want to use a lot of big words. You don't want to tell them things that they're not familiar with. You know, you want to write and talk to kids and so they understand what you're talking about. So that was, uh, that came easy. So I, uh, I really enjoyed it. And, uh, but that's a great question. The true story, I had a lot to say and I thought I could communicate it well. How's that, ladies? It's a good story. Yeah. Who else? Do we have time for a couple more? How are we doing on time? Oh, you got something written down. S Stefan? What was your favorite thing about being a sport or counselor? Okay. What's my favorite thing about being a sportscaster? I think the, I think the fun part is, and a friend of mine told me this when we were very young. He said the fun part is you get to tell people stuff. That sounds silly, doesn't it? You get to tell, tell people stuff. You, you can, hey, did you hear about that? You know, people like to talk to their friends or their parents or their relatives and say, hey, did you hear about this? Or did you hear what, what this guy, you know what this guy did? Or did you see what that And I got to do that every night on television. I said, hey, let me tell you what this guy did. Let me show you what he did. So it's fun to talk about what people do and what they did and what's interesting. And they do amazing things. I mean, uh, and, and we would show funny things. I mean, it was once a guy in a baseball game, he went back to catch the ball and he ran right through the fence. He didn't run into the wall, he ran through the wall. So I mean, funny stuff happens, right? Or one guy went back once to catch a home run. He was playing right field and he went back and the ball hit him on top of the head. And then the ball went over the fence. Okay, funny, right? What's the rule? Ball hit him in the head, then went over the fence. What's the rule? Ground rule double, huh? Home run. Home run. Buzz. Okay, here's another question. Do you know why sports is confusing to me? Because the rules are, are dumb. If you step on the, if a baseball hits the line, the foul line in baseball, the ball hits the line, is that a fair ball or a foul ball? Fair. It's a fair ball. Ball hits the line, fair ball. If the ball hits the line in tennis, in or out? No? In. Okay. So baseball, if you hit the line, it's okay. In tennis, if you hit the line, it's okay. What if you step on the line in basketball, the sideline? Out. What if you step on the line in football on the sideline? Out. So how, why is that? One's out, one's in, out, in, out. Very confusing. There are four bases in baseball. Which base or which part of which base is in foul territory? Think about this for a second. Huh? Just think. You have four bases. Home plate, first base, second base, third base. Which part of which base is in foul territory? First base? Second. Third? Home? Guess what? All parts of all four bases are in fair territory. Not one part, that was a trick question, not one part of any base is in foul territory. So amaze your friends and neighbors with that one. Another question over here. Here you go. Jeremy. Who inspired you to become a reporter for news, for sports? That's a great question. I'll tell you someone who didn't think I should be a sports reporter or a news reporter, and that was my father. 
my father thought, ah, that's a silly way to earn a living. You know, why don't you do something serious? Um, I was inspired by other sports personalities, and I'd say their names, but you really, they were way before your time. So you probably, for the adults in the room, there were some sportscasters named Kurt Gowdy and Mel Allen and Howard Cosell who did various things in their careers, which I thought were great. So I admired other sportscasters when I was coming up. <clears throat> And the great fun was getting to meet some of these people. Yeah, I told you, Mickey Mantle was my hero. He played for the Yankees. Great home run hitter, switch hitter. He hit righty and lefty. Fast runner, great fielder. He was my hero growing up, so I got to meet him when I got older. It was always a great thrill when you get to meet your hero. When I was nine years old, I wrote him a letter asking for his autograph. And I put it in an envelope and a stamp, and he actually signed the autograph and sent it back to me. Well, I once read that he never answered fan mail from boys, he only answered fan mail from young women. I have no idea why. So, when I met him, I said to him, I said, Mick, you answered my letter. I thought you only answered fan mail from young women. You know what my hero said? You must write like a girl. I have no idea what that meant, but that's what my hero said, yes. You had a question, Joseph? When I was little, did I like to play sports? Go Yankees. I, I used to play sports, but not great. I was, I did, the best I ever got in sports was my junior high school had a softball team. And I, and I was on the softball team. That's the far, uh, highest level of sports I ever attained. So when I couldn't do anything, you do the next best thing and you talk about it. So that's what I became, a sportscaster. But no, I wasn't a great athlete. Anyway, uh, this is a lot of fun. I hope you guys like to read. I hope you like sports. Because I think sports can teach you about getting along and teamwork and trying hard. And as you'll see from these books and the one that's coming out next year, anybody, doesn't matter where you come from, how big or how small you are, what your religion is, what your color is, what your nationality is, you can become a champion. You really can. So, have fun everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>